Okay, this is a continuation of the last video where we were configuring the Minim OSD with the Arju Pilot. The next thing we have to do is uh, configure the Minim OSD itself for the screen values that we want to see. And we have to do that with a configuration tool. In order to use the configuration tool, we need to connect the Minim OSD directly to the computer through the USB port. Well, the Minim OSD doesn't have a USB port, so I had to specially order an FTDI to USB breakout board right here, and that came from SparkFun. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see it. This is the back side that will connect onto the FTDI connector on the Minim OSD, and then on the front you can see the USB connector. And here is the part number from SparkFun if you need to order. It's DEV09716. Okay, let's get started by connecting the Minim OSD to the breakout board and then plug the breakout board through a USB cable into the computer. Now before we configure the Minim OSD, I just wanted to show you what we have now, which is the same thing we had last week. I'm also wondering if we can get the video voltage up here. I'm thinking maybe the OSD can display the video voltage that's feeding it, which is 12 volts. So we can have both the flight battery voltage and the video voltage. I'm hoping. We'll see what happens. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, disconnect the OSD from the Arju Pilot Mega 2.6 by unplugging the FTDI connector. And then I'm going to plug on this uh, USB breakout board. The next thing to do is connect the USB cable. The other end is not connected to the computer yet. Plugging it into the USB port. I notice the light came on the Minim OSD. And it's installing a driver and that's probably for the FTDI to USB breakout box or breakout board. Okay, Windows 7 is installing the driver from the Windows Update service. All right, the driver is now ready to use. Okay, looking at the device manager in Windows, I can see that the COM port that was created during this process was COM8. Okay, the next thing to do is go to this address here, and then go to the download section, and download the latest configuration tool and hex code to update the Minim OSD. One is the extra 2.2 .2 config tool, that's what CT stands for, and I'm going to download that. And then after I'm done, I'm going to go back, let me sit the back bucket, and get the Minim OSD extra plain 2.2 .2 hex to update the firmware. If you're using a copter, you can get the other one that was there. Okay, I've installed the config tool and now I'm going to launch it. It's right down here. I actually had to just copy the files into a directory and then create me a shortcut. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and run it. Windows always complains about running stuff. But there we go, and there's the config tool. Okay, next I'm going to go down and select the right COM port, which I know is 8 because I looked at the device manager. Okay, let's just see if the COM port works by trying to read from the OSD. And there it is, downloading data, so I guess it's working. Okay, next let's go to options here and update the firmware. Go op options update firmware and then it wants me to go to where the firmware is located and it should be under downloads here and this could be it right here yep that's it it's the uh, I've downloaded the minimum OSD extra plane 2.2 .2 hex earlier okay it's now done I'll click OK Okay, I'm looking at the first 
uh, page for the OSD. There's two formats you can have. So the first page. And the first thing I notice is when I click on any of these items, it'll highlight it in the list here and tell me what it is. For that, that's airspeed there. Now this one at the top was puzzling me. What were all these A's in a row? I clicked on that and it highlighted call sign down here. So that's uh, your ham call sign. You take your ham license call sign and put it in there. I'll just go ahead and go down here and save current tab so I can get all of these things on the OSD screen. So I'll save that tab. Done writing. Panel 1 data. Now let's do the same thing to panel 2. I'll do save current tab and when I click this I'm going to look at the OSD and see if anything blinks down here. Yep, I can see it writing. I see both boards actually blink. So it looks like something's happening. Okay, I'm on the configuration tab here and I'm going to go ahead and save it. Now if I look up here under video mode it does say NTSC so hopefully that'll get written when I save the current tab. Okay, it's done writing it. Now let's go back on the batteries and see what it looks like on the screen. Taking the breakout board off so that I can connect it back to the ArduPilot. Well, I had to do a little adjustment to my monitor, even though I put it on NTSC, and now everything fits on the screen pretty good. The call sign is blinking up there at the top every so often, and uh, the GPS satellite is blinking and not locked. That's right here, because I don't have a GPS connected to it yet. I mean, connected to the Arju Pilot. That's coming soon. They sent me the wrong cable and it should be coming in the mail so I can connect up the U-Blocks GPS, which is right there. So all of these items can be moved around and customized the way you want it. I think I just realized why it's not showing any current down here in this reading right here. Showing the volts of the battery but not the current. I think it's because the only thing the power module is powering is the Arju pilot and part of the Minim OSD, so that's not much current. And I've just plugged on my receiver. Kind of strange to plug that on there, I know. But I needed something for a load. And now I've got an amperage reading. I'm still not able to display the video voltage. What I have displaying right down here is the the main battery voltage or the flight battery voltage, which is actually the battery here that's connected to the power module and is being read by the Arju pilot. And uh, this battery will supply voltage to the ESC here, which will run the main prop drive motor. So that's actually the flight battery or the main battery. I can display that voltage, but I'd also like to display the video voltage, which would be the battery over here that's connected right here to the OSD and runs the voltage for the uh, camera and for the video transmitter. So that would be the video battery voltage that I want to see. Well, unfortunately, the minimum OSD is not set up to display the video voltage like some OSDs can. And that's what I found out online. And also the Arju Pilot so far can only display one battery voltage. And since we're using it for the main battery, uh, it's not going to be able to display any other voltage without some serious modification. It could be done, I suppose, but it's really better if I could get the video voltage from over here at the OSD because it's separate, uh, separated by two circuits here. So we have the 5 volts over here and the 12 volts over on this battery. 5 volts is being supplied by the Arju pilot. So really the Arju pilot's not involved with the video voltage. So it'd be nice to just display it directly on the OSD. Well, since minimum OSD doesn't do that, 
I looked around and found out there was a mod on the internet for adding a, a resistor divider to a certain pin on the minimum OSD chip and then take these wires I guess and connect them back to the 12 volts where it's input here and the ground where it's input there. But then there's some programming involved. I will supply some links under the video that go to these uh, video voltage mods for the minimum OSD. Uh, there's one right, right here. I'll put this link underneath the video and then there's another another article or forum actually about it here that has some of the code. Uh, there's more to it than this and I haven't found the rest yet but that's a start so I'll put uh, those two links up and uh, or put them under the video. But for right now I guess I'm just going to have the main voltage displaying and uh, it's going to display right down here.